Hello and welcome to a Friday of Anaxel 23. We're excited to be here this afternoon and uh, we have uh, several presentations that we'll be discussing. My name's Teresa Gore. I am a past president of Anaxel and I'm also a content manager for HealthySimulation.com. And with me today, I have Chastity Mays and she are the chairperson for the Homegrown Solutions. So I'd like to start off, if you're not familiar with Homegrown Solutions, this is an excellent opportunity for all of our members, and we have so many innovative things, that I'm going to turn it over to Chastity to kind of explain what Homegrown Solutions are and how it started. Yep. Thank you, everybody, for coming. So if you're not familiar with Homegrown Solutions, Homegrown's is basically a self-made solution. Um, budget friendly and it's something that you're willing to share with all of the simulation community and the, the um, concept is is that we share it on a website you can go there and we give you the steps and the roadmap to recreate it all the ingredients that it takes um, it was started by a lady named Meg Maccarello in 2007, she came to an Anaxel conference and she was networking with other simulationists and she was having a problem um, with her students. She wanted to do intradermal injections and the other faculty was like, hey, well, at our center, we use hot dogs to do this. And so it started this whole concept. They found an empty room, put a piece of paper on the door, 40 people showed up to just start sharing ideas and now it is an official committee and we have a website within the NLN. Yeah, so um, you know this goes past an Axel and like you said it's at NLN and it is a great opportunity. Um, do you just keep like this year's information or is this kind of like a repository for people? It is a repository. Uh, we have solutions that have been posted since 2014 and the beauty of it is is a lot of the solutions um, maybe that were in the beginning have now been adapted so for example, with the hot dogs, um, now at our center, we take press on nails, put them in the hot dog, put some simulated pus underneath it, and our learners practice with ingrown toenails. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, so these are the things that, you know, we really want you innovation, your innovators, you know, we, we will take innovators, disruptive innovators. We want your ideas uh, because we want um, the simulation to grow and we want it to be budget friendly. So I see that you brought some little props for us today. I and if you'd like to explain these. I did. So at our center, we um, we're a partnership between three. So we're IU Health, IU School of Nursing and IU School of Medicine. So we really work on our task trainers on a needs basis. And I had one of all my faculty who wanted a port a cath trainer. So I did the pricing, it was pretty expensive, um, couldn't work it into our budget. But I was like, well, we had some donated port a cath So the first thing was I just took a bath basin that was donated to our center and put a port in there, put some simulated blood on a pressure bag, hung it and um, made some fake skin that we put over and every learner could access it. And then we took it a step further. I had this torso that showed up at our donation counter. And um, so I took it a step further and added it to that. And we just recreate the skin. We've been using these for about three years now and I haven't tried to change out the port. So everything was donated, very budget friendly and a lot of learners have used it. So did it meet the faculty's expectations and the outcomes they were looking for? It absolutely did. She was very happy and it didn't cost her a dime. <laughs> so um, that is just some of the ideas. Other things that, that we've seen on there, uh, you know, is doing wounds and how to make wounds. And these are things um, that, you know, I've got one that I need to submit uh, that I'm getting ready uh, that is uh, it kind of the same idea, but it's, um, to, you know, when somebody's going to inject and you're trying to see how it infiltrates, if you'll take a glove and put a, a kitty litter in it, then when you inject, you see it absorb and filtrate out. Think about that. That yeah. is... A, that's so cheap, and so you know it's one of those things. Um, do are there uh, prizes for this? Is this any recognition? 
or how, how does this work? Yeah, so there's several benefits of um, submitting your solution. So no, you're not gonna make millions of dollars. This is all just about sharing and caring. But some benefits are if you have your certification like CHSE, CHSOS, um, you can get your continuing units of education points for that. Um, also, you'll be published to the website. So your name will be up there and it stays up there indefinitely. And then each year we invite the top five to seven presenters to at the Homegrown Solutions section. So that's today from 3.30 to five in Ballroom D if you wanna come. But the top five to seven people are invited to present their solutions there. So what do we have this year? So this year we have um, the porta calf So sorry I gave it away. <laughs> um, we have another, the gentleman sitting in the back, but he actually took an old sim man that wasn't working anymore and put a aquarium pump and he made the mannequin have a GI bleed. So it will bleed out of its mouth. Um, we have a operating high fidelity mannequins remotely. It was a group who did this during COVID. So that'll be a very interesting one. We have seizure bed rails that somebody made from like a gymnastic mat to use at their center. And then we have something, it's, uh, it's IV cheaters. So with your IV pumps, if you're doing a simulation and the goal and objective is not um, how to run the fluids, there's nothing more annoying than your IV pump alarming the whole time. So this group actually found a workaround so that the pump will not recognize the air the fluid will just keep running without causing any interruptions. So, you know, I, I think that uh, everyone here can see the benefits of this and just how uh, innovative it is. Uh, is there a certain submission time or is it open all the time? So the beauty is because we're all very busy that the portal stays open so you can submit a solution at any time. Now they're only reviewed quarterly. So that's January, April, July, and October. But say if you're in at an academic center and December's a little lighter, you can 100% submit then. Um, just know that it won't be reviewed till January 15th. It's always the 15th of each of those review dates. So I think this is an excellent opportunity for all the learners here and for all the faculty um, to explore Think of things that you've done as a workaround because you didn't have, I mean, I think we've all used the fake nails. I mean, the, the, the press on nails, uh, yeah, it's like my hands were permanently glued for a while uh, with, with that. But these are the things that we need to do to grow simulation and do it in a, and be financial stewards uh, and get the outcomes that we're looking for. So anything you know, that you'd like to say uh, about this? Um, there are a couple important things that I like to make note of is one that you do not have to be a member of an Axel or the NLN to access the website. It's free for everyone um, and there should be a handout in everybody's goodie bag. So it's housed within the CERC page that's the Systems Innovation Resource Center and the easiest way to get there is your friend Google. Just Google Homegrowns plus CERC and it'll take you there. Um, if you have operations people, encourage them also to submit. You do not need to be a nurse or doctor, and there can be several authors listed as the inventors. And this is a great way that, that we help grow our simulation operations specialist is because, you know, we a lot of times go to them and say, I need this. And they sit there and work on things and then come back with us with solutions. Encourage them so that you know they get to continue on with that. And also with that, it's not a lot of writing to submit because I know sometimes the ops aren't as um, experienced with having to write and submit things. So it's very basic. There's a big button right above all the solutions on our page and it, you click on that and the most writing is just listing the objective of your simulation. Other than that, you're just list, listing the steps it takes to recreate it and the ingredients you use. Each solution will also have a picture with it and then many of them also have videos. So we hope that we have helped you identify some additional resources to grow your simulation program so that you can meet the objectives that you want for your program and for your learners to get the outcomes to improve patient care. Uh, and this is once again is we're looking at how we are reimagining and imagining the future of simulation and we're depending on you 
the simulationist to help us do that. So we thank you for attending today and thank you for sharing these ideas with us. Thank you so and uh, please t attend their session, yep. which is what time again? It's from 3.30 to 5 in Ballroom D. All right. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much and hope to see you at the presentation. Thank you.